Now this complex here, C4, B and C2B, it has the ability to cleave C3 into its subunits, which are C3A and C3B, but it also has the option to bind with the C3B to form this complex. And after the formation of this complex, this complex has the ability to attract and break down the C5 complement into C5B, the bigger portion, and C5A. A portion will move away, B portion will stay behind like this. And again, this C5A will also act as the anaphylotoxin, but this particular C5A also has its involvement in a process known as chemotaxis. So now this C5B has the ability to attract other complements as well. So as this complex here, C4B, C2B, and C3B. This complex here was involved in the breakdown of or the cleavage of this C5 particle into these two portions. That's why this whole complex is known as C5 convertase, as it has the ability to convert C5 into its constituent subunits C5A and C5B. Now this C5B will recruit all the other complements and turn by turn it will recruit all the complements like at first it will recruit c6 and after the recruitment of c6 there comes the stage when c7 is recruited and then comes c8 and finally they will attract a lot of c9s and c9s will unite or combine to form a channel this channel you can see there are lots of c9 that came and united with each other they formed a complex or channel or in fact, this is the pore. This is the pore formation. And almost 18 C9 units are required to form this hole within the membrane of the pathogen. And this pore will ultimately be responsible for the breakdown of the whole pathogenic particle or molecule. And bacteria will eventually rupture. Why? So because a lot of water, water and other fluids will start moving from the outer space to the inner space. And there would be movement of ions. There would be movement of water within the cell of the bacteria and a lot of ions will also move away. Now this is the hand drawn picture of the whole complex that is starting from C5B. We know that this is the cell membrane and we have all the other complements as well. C6 here, then we have C7 and then C8. C7 and C8 are embedded deep down the cell membrane because they have this unique hydrophobic region. And then comes the next thing after the whole process, a lot of C9 will combine almost 18 are required to form this polymeric unit which is known as the C9 polymeric molecule or channel and this channel is formed with the help of all the complements and starting from C5B ending at C9 this whole complex is known as MAC MAC membrane attack complex because now it will finally break or rupture the whole bacterial cell now suppose we have this complete cell here with its intracellular space and water will start moving water will start moving from the outside to the inner portion of this cell and there comes a stage when it won't be tolerable for the whole bacterial cell and it will burst this process is known as lysis and water is involved or the fluids are involved in the breakdown or destruction of bacterial cell and there is also the movement of certain things like ions they will also move and they will create an imbalance, osmotic imbalance. Due to that particular thing, a lot of water will enter this particular cell and ultimately the bacteria won't be able to tolerate that much fluid or water within its body and eventually it will rupture. So this is known as membrane attack. So attack was possible due to this channel due to the channel that is created on membrane. That's why the whole process is known as or this whole complex here is known as membrane attack complex because this complex is formed on this particular membrane and it ultimately resulted in the breakdown or rupture of the whole bacterial cell. So that was the simple idea behind pore formation 
Earlier we talked about opsonization where there was this involvement of macrophages or other phagocytes. So I hope you got this idea. At the end we can summarize the whole process in tabular form. Here you can see a C1 and C1 will unite with the antibody and it will let itself activate it. It will activate itself by this binding and after this binding they will act on C2 and C4 and they will cleave or break down C2 and C4 into their respective subunits, the bigger subunit and a smaller subunit. Same goes for the green C4. It will be broken down into C4B and C4A. And then the bigger subunit from this position and bigger subunit from C4, they will form a complex. This complex has the ability to convert, cleave, or break down C3 into its constituent subunits, which are C3A and C3B. Now this C3B, when it is accumulated, when a lots of C3 are broken down in this manner, and this C3B accumulates on the surface of bacteria, it will attract or this whole scenario will attract a lot of macrophages and other phagocytes to the spot and they will then engulf and destroy the bacteria by the process of phagocytosis. So that was the number one option and then comes the other option. If this complex attaches itself to a molecule or a particle of C3B, they will form a complex. This complex now has the ability to break C5 into its constituent subunits which are C5B and C5A. That's why this whole complex is named C5 convertase. Earlier, this portion was named as C3 convertase. Now C5B will recruit all the other complements like C6, C7, C8, and C9. And ultimately C9 will form a channel and it will allow the movement of water and fluids which will ultimately enter the bacterial space, intracellular space or bacterial body and it will ultimately kill by rupturing the whole structure of bacteria. And there would also be the movement of ions and due to the movement of fluids from the outside and the movement of ions, this leads to osmotic imbalance and due to that particular osmotic imbalance, the whole structure is compromised. So ultimately, the lysis of bacterial cell takes place. So that was the whole idea behind the complement system or more specifically, the classical pathway of complement system. I hope you got this idea and I hope you have learned something new today. Thank you for listening.